In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint George, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want you to take uh, this time to invite you all, uh, wherever you are and whatever you are doing, to take just a few minutes to pray uh, with me for the reposal of the soul of George Floyd. As you can see, this candle vigil has been placed here for him with his picture. May his soul rest in peace. And I also would like to invite you to pray for his family. May our Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of Comfort and Consolation, who stood at the foot of the cross and watched the death of her son, uh, may she intercede for George Floyd's family and grant them comfort and consolation. At this time, we also need to be united in prayer for our nation, for every neighborhood, every town and city across our country. We all are in need of prayer for peace and healing. In the last six days, our nation has watched the senseless and brutal death of George Floyd. His cry for help that when he couldn't breathe will for sure be heard in heaven for justice. Discrimination, racism, and such brutal attack of denying somebody's right to breathe and to live are not acceptable in the eyes of God and any human person. Much has been said and more has been demonstrated about the tragedy of George's death in the last few days. The protests that we have seen across the cities of our nation is indeed a reflection of justified frustration and anger of all who have experienced or witnessed humiliation and inequality because of their race or the color of their skin. For all those who value the gift of life and the dignity of every human person could never accept any justification for killing George Floyd. In times of crisis against humanity, we have to speak the truth and defend life of every human person. However, when, how, and where to do that will determine the effectiveness of such protests on behalf of those who need justice. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. in his speech, Strength to Love, in 1963 said, the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moment of comfort or convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. This is a question for all of us today. All of us who have watched what has taken place in our country in the last six days, where do we stand in times of such darkness, lack of justice, anger, frustration? The answer is not in what some of the protesters have been doing, rather in active listening and the offering of true justice. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said that those who protest in such way, it's because they are expressing the language of being unheard. Now more than ever, we need to listen. We need to listen to all those who are experiencing the sorrow and grief for losing George in such brutal way. We need to listen to all those who are angry and frustrated and seeking justice. We need to listen for all those who've been impacted and affected by the violence of the last few days. Yes, indeed, we need to listen to one another. We need to listen so that we can root out all the racial injustice that is still present, unfortunately, in some of the areas of our American nation. 
At the same time, all the acts of violence, destruction of buildings, and ruining the livelihood of ordinary small businesses who have already lost so much because of COVID-19 does not help or advance the cause for racial equality and justice for George Floyd. Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. in the same speech, Strength to Love said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. When I became an American citizen, I felt so proud of so many beautiful, powerful, and meaningful things that I have read about the history of our nation, things that I have seen and witnessed by being with American people. Those things that I have read, I have witnessed and heard. Unfortunately, today, I feel they have been lost in midst of what we have seen in the last few days. In this nation, we have been very blessed because our country is made up of a diversity of people who came to this land because of liberty and the pursuit of happiness that the people of America offer to all those who come to live on this blessed soil. Liberty for all who have come to this land has been paid off by the precious lives of all those who have lived as heroes and died as heroes. Our, bless, our country has been blessed by many men and women who have served our country in military services. We just celebrated Memorial Day in our country when we paid tribute of remembering all those who gave their lives for this nation. Today, as we think of those countless men and women across our nation and throughout the world who are giving their lives to defend the freedom of this nation, the democracy of our country, and to make the American flag stand with pride on this American soil and wherever our American people live across the world. Today is so painful to watch that in some of the violent protests, people are burning places, cars, and yes, sadly, even our American flag. It is okay for people to disagree about issues in politics or war, but at no cost, our American flag should be burned on an American soil by our own people. Gandhi said, we win justice quickest by rendering justice to others. The acts of violence and the discrimination and also the destruction of neighborhoods, places of worship and the dignity of our American flag will not help to win justice for all who feel hurt by what happened. It is sad that violence has also overshadowed and affected the credibility of those who genuinely wanted to protest peacefully, to seek justice and equality, and to honor George Floyd's life. In the book of the prophet Isaiah, chapter 23, verse 17, we read that true peace is the work of justice. Also in his speech, Strive Toward Freedom, in 1958, Reverend Martin Luther King Jr. said, true peace is the presence of justice. So to pursue justice for George, to pursue justice for all the communities who have felt discriminated, discriminated and not accepted or respected because of the color of their skin, to end the stigma of racism and discrimination in our country, we have to do so peacefully. Now more than ever, we need to be united to promote justice with peace, 
for all those who, whose lives have been impacted by racism, discrimination, and violence, especially in recent days. With the power of love, we can create neighborhoods where love can dwell and all can live safely. We can build communities where people learn to love, to help, and to forgive. These communities will make our towns and cities to be made of hopes, dreams, and visions. In these places, the love of God and the love of people will put an end to fear, danger, racism, and division. Let us be an instrument of God's peace where there is hatred, let us sow love. Where there is darkness, let us sow light. I truly believe that there is so much goodness in our nation. Even those who feel angry and frustrated, it's beautiful. We have seen so much passion in those people who are filling the streets of our cities and towns, seeking justice and equality. Let's take that passion Let's take the power of that passion and turn it into light and hope that the children of our nation for generations to come will not see the days that we have seen recently. And by doing so, we will definitely honor George Floyd's life and those who have experienced injustice just like him. George Floyd, May your soul rest in peace, and may this peace reign in every human heart across our nation and beyond. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. <laughs>